Good morning, it's Wednesday the 25th of May. A fisherman was once sitting by his boat, smoking his pipe in a beautiful seaside town. A businessman on holiday came along. Why aren't you out fishing, he asked him. Because I've caught enough fish for today, came the answer. Well, why don't you go and catch some more, persisted the businessman. Why would I want to do that, countered the fisherman. Well, then you could increase your income, maybe buy another boat, catch some more fish and maybe eventually have a fleet of boats. And why would I want to do that, asked the fisherman a second time. Well, you could become rich then, and you could really enjoy yourself. The fisherman drew deeply on his pipe. So, what do you think I'm doing now, he replied. We'll assume that at the time this story was set, the fisherman was unaware that pipe smoking could damage his health, although perhaps no more than the business advice he was being given. It's a false assumption to link the accumulation of wealth with contentment, and in fact the reverse is often true. The more wealth, the more worries. Disputes leading to court cases between wealthy individuals, such as footballers' wives Mrs Rooney and Mrs Vardy, generate pages of newspaper copy for voyeuristic readers who may be envious of their wealth. Yet, I cannot help feeling that these two ladies have become the victims of their own fame and fortune. I cannot imagine either of them becoming more contented as individuals, or more loving as parents as a result of this whole process. There is a strange contradiction here. We are rightly very concerned about the rapidly rising costs of living and the poverty which may compel many families to choose between eating and heating next winter. Yet some of those who have least are able to maintain a level of well-being and calm which often eludes the wealthy. There's an interesting quote from John Steinbeck's powerful novel, The Grapes of Wrath. If you're in trouble, or hurt, or need, go to the poor people. They're the ones that'll help. The only ones. If Steinbeck's character is right, it seems to suggest that the poor may be more generous with their time, or energies, or money, than those with greater resources. Our culture encourages an attitude of entitlement and greed. Many would have to admit that democracy and capitalism are better than most of the alternatives that have been and are attempted in our world. Not many of us would choose to live in Kim Jong-un's North Korea or Vladimir Putin's Russia in preference to the UK. Yet, our supposedly liberal and enlightened systems are not in themselves reflective of God's kingdom values when they lead, which they do, to extremes of wealth and poverty. It cannot be right that according to the Fair Share website, the UK food market dumps 3.6 million tonnes of food each year when 7 million people struggle to afford to eat. It's estimated that worldwide, the value of food thrown away is approximately double the profit made by the food sector in total. Something is desperately wrong. The book of Proverbs, or the Observer's Book of Life as I sometimes call it, is full of practical wisdom. Some words from chapter 30 seem to sum up the situation. Give me neither poverty nor wealth, but give me only my daily bread. If I'm too well fed, I might get independent, saying, God, who needs him? If I'm poor, I might steal, and so dishonour the name of my God. I wonder if Jesus had this quote in mind when he taught us to pray, Give us this day our daily bread. It's still a prayer that all of us need to offer, rich and poor alike. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Amen.